In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, our one true God. <clears throat> Greetings everybody, and thank you for tuning in to this polemic video. My name is Archbishop Gregory, head of the, of the Genuine Orthodox Church in America, the remnant of the Russian Church abroad when it remained Orthodox, true Orthodox, confessing Orthodox. Ecumenists, they are involved in the ecumenical heresy. What is that? That is the heresy of heresy. It's not just one little heresy that's saying, oh, Christ is just, just uh, created. It's not a heresy saying uh, icons are, are not unacceptable. It's not a heresy saying the Virgin Mary is not the mother of God. It's not, a, it's not something small. This is the heresy of heresy. This takes all of those. Yes. It takes all the abominable teachings of heretics and puts them all together and the bishops of the official churches of world orthodoxy say, all you heretics are our brothers. We love you in the faith. We will pray with you. And we're working so we could give you our holy communion. We want to unite with you. That's the heresy of heresy. They say, there is no heretic anymore. We're all brothers. See how it works? No, I can't see how it works because it doesn't make sense. So, so look, I wonder if these benighted people, and I mean the leaders of world orthodoxy, these, these rogues, they are saying to themselves, you know, are we right? Are we right in doing this? Because what did we do? We took the book of the canons, we threw it out the window, we took the whole history of orthodoxy and we turned it upside down. We broke so many rules, so many canons, <clears throat> so we could start this ecumenical movement for greater participation in the World Council of Churches. What is this? They want greater participation. That there should be continuous continuous and intense participation and presence of orthodoxy in the World Council of Churches, the Council of European Churches, and the ecumenical movement in general, and to cooperate with all, with all religions and peoples of all ideologies. This is where ecumenism is going to get you. Participation in the World Council of Churches. Didn't our Metropolitan warn against that? Yes, many years ago. How many churches in the World Council? 352. 352 churches. So, how does that happen? Where did 352 churches came? I thought Christ only made one church. Yes, he only made one church. But if you get a guy like uh, some Joe Schmo, no, some Joe Smith, right? Who's the one that started Mormonism? Joseph Smith. Now, who's the one that started uh, Baptist? Baptist. John Smith. Jo John? Yeah. Oh, so if you get a Joe and a John together and they fill out a uh, corporation papers and call themselves uh, the Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-time Baptists, whatever. Whatever. And then 
you join the World Council of Churches and you get to participate in all the fantastic ceremonies that happen if you belong to this ungodly group of clowns. The coming of the Lord, of the day of the Lord, by reason of which the heavens, the heavens, that means, God have mercy, that means all the planets, the heavens, <clears throat> being set on fire shall be dissolved and the elements being burned with intense heat shall be melted. But according to his promise, we look for a new heaven and a new earth. So the, the church teaches Everything's going to be renewed. It's going to be fixed. A new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So we're not going to live in uh, the fallen state that happened because of the first Adam. We're going to have a new heaven and a new earth where dwelleth righteousness. Of course, <clears throat> what's heaven going to be? There's going to be cheats? There's going to be robbers? No, it's not going to happen. So, <clears throat> at the end he says, Ye therefore, beloved, since ye know these things beforehand, Yes, we know them because we believe the prophecies of our Lord and the prophecies of his apostles. Be on the guard, lest having been led astray by error of the lawless, you should fall from your own steadfastness. But keep on increasing in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Saint Peter ends his epistle. And we hear it even in the Old Testament, because look at the Psalter. The Psalter said, I should memorize this and tell this to all my relatives who were once in the faith but now think it's okay uh, think it's okay to to be away from the church away from the true church Because it says, for behold, those removing themselves to a distance from thee, they shall perish. Come on, we should all memorize this. It's in the 72nd Psalm. Christ said, or the world, uh, King David says, for behold, for those removing themselves to a distance from thee, they shall perish, and thou shalt destroy utterly everyone going a whoring from thee. That's the prophecy the pro among so many that said, you cannot do this. You cannot turn your back on Christ and remove yourself to any distance. You have to be close. You have to be 
loving him every day, all the time. Because if you go away and fall in love with <clears throat> some other thing, that's like going a whoring <clears throat> from the love you're supposed to have, is it not? So, all right. God bless you all. Mother God, protect you and be with you. Amen.